Welcome to lecture 15 of biology 116 entitled Reproduction 2. In this lecture we're going to move forward with our look at the reproductive systems in humans by now talking about the female side of the story. And in order to understand the female side of the story, one thing that we should be doing that I'll try to do as well as we go through this lecture is always comparing the female perspective to the male perspective. The male information that we already know from lecture 14 in Reproduction 1 and comparing it to what we're learning right now in lecture 15 in Reproduction 2. It's very important to do this comparison because exams are heavy with questions that ask for comparisons between oogenesis, which is the, produce, the production of an egg, versus spermatogenesis genesis, which is the production of a sperm, and the differences and similarities between uh, reproductive organs, as we'll see. And that's something I'll try to do as we move forward through this lecture. So in order to begin this lecture on female reproduction, we'll talk about uh, a little bit of background. And then we'll entitle this first flowchart, Background 1. Specifically, we want to initially begin by really just labeling out the major functions of the female reproductive system, much like we did in our previous lecture and looked at the two major functions of the male reproductive system. Let's remember, those two functions are to produce sperm via spermatogenesis and to deliver sperm. And that is something that we looked at in great detail as we saw every organ and every single part of the male reproductive system and how it's involved in that. We're going to do much the same in this lecture. But the functions in the female reproductive system are a little bit more expansive, actually. There's a little bit more to look at. So first and foremost, the major function of the female reproductive system is to produce ova. Ova is just the plural for eggs. So the singular would be to produce an egg, which would be an ovum. And that's the specific terminology we want to get used to because that's the terminology used when studying female reproduction. Ova and ovum for egg or eggs. In addition to producing the ova, the female reproductive system has to also receive something. It actually receives the other half of fertilization. It receives the penis, which is the male reproductive copulatory organ that is going to be in charge, mainly in charge, of delivering what? Also the sperm, because the sperm is going to be released from the penis at the end of the urethra into the female reproductive system, and that has to be received by something. What is it received by? It's received, of course, by exactly what I just said, the female reproductive system. In some way, we'll talk about that uh, in greater detail as we move forward. In addition to receiving the sperm and receiving the penis, the female reproductive system also has to do another very important job of reproduction. That is, houses, is that it houses and it nourishes a developing embryo. So if we do have fertilization, that embryo, that human being that has to develop and eventually be uh, given birth to, that's the end process of this housing and nourishing, it has to be somewhere. And it stays within the female, as we know, females get pregnant. And this pregnancy, all of this is occurring within the female reproductive system as a whole. And for that reason, it's a major function of this system. Finally, Usually upon and after birth, we have to make sure that there is also a lactation uh, function associated with the female reproductive system. This is the idea of breastfeeding. Because we as humans are mammals, we will breastfeed our young, the females specifically, and thus that will be a part and a function of their female reproductive systems. And that covers our functions. So we want to make sure we look at how these functions are highlighted throughout this lecture how we cover them throughout this lecture, and we'll begin by looking at the coverage of these functions by first speaking of the anatomy of the female reproductive system, much like we did for the male side of the story. We're going to first look at the main organs of the female reproductive system, and that's going to be highlighted in figure 46.10. Again, what we should definitely be doing is comparing these organs and how they relate to, let's say, the male counterparts. Sometimes there won't even be counterparts, but there will be something at least to compare and differentiate to, as we'll try to do as we move forward with this lecture. So the first organ that I want to go over um, uh, are the ovaries, but we'll just label it as ovary. Here we have to first understand that this is the primary female gonad. This is essentially the female reproductive organ. Much like the testes are the male reproductive organ, the primary male gonad, the female gonad is the ovary, and ovary is also found in a pair within the female body, much like the testes. There are two testes in every male, and in every female there are two ovaries, thus we have a very nice sort of uh, correlating similarity between male and female reproduction. But here comes a difference. The ovary is actually found within the abdominal cavity. It is not found external like the testes. The testes are found 
in wrap, uh, wrapped within a scrotum structure because we need that testes to be one to two degrees cooler than the body temperature because that's how spermatogenesis works. Oogenesis, as we'll see, the egg production is a little bit different, and thus it's actually found within the female reproductive system, within the female reproductive body. That's going to be within the internal structure, and thus ovary would be an internal structure, unlike the testes. Moving forward, this is also going to be, because it's an internal structure, it has to be held in place. It can't just be uh, out and about. Um, this is going to be specifically held in place pretty strongly by uh, ligaments. And this makes sure, this makes ensures the fact that the ovaries aren't bouncing around inside the internal female body. They're going to be held strongly in place by these specific ligaments. So that's another difference that we see between male and female. And then finally, the ovary is going to be very important because it's in charge of the production of two major, major parts of female reproduction as a whole. First and foremost, the ovaries are going to be producing gametes. This, they, they are the female gonad and therefore they must produce gametes. And those gametes are specifically going to be referred to from this point forward as oocytes. Oocytes, or eggs, are going to be produced via a process known as oogenesis. Again, terminology is important here. Oocytes means eggs, essentially, and it also would then be referring to ova, and we can use the regular vernacular of eggs, be able to differentiate and sort of interchangeably use the terms that are being used throughout this lecture. Oogenesis, again, remember, genesis means birth, and oo just refers to the Latin way root of saying egg. So that's our first sort of production from the ovaries. Another major function, there's our function right there, and there's the reason why it's a function. In addition, not only uh, does the ovary produce uh, gametes, it also produces sex hormones, just like the testes. Testes in males also produce a sex hormone called testosterone. Here, the sex hormone is actually different. It's actually called estradiol. Now, sometimes students get confused. They may say that it's estrogen, but specifically, if we want to be more specific, we actually refer to it as estradiol. Estrogen is just a class of hormones. It's a broad class, and a specific estrogen that is specifically produced by the ovary is called estradiol. In addition to that sex hormone, progesterone is another sex hormone that is produced by the ovary. This is going to be very important in pregnancy and maintaining pregnancy as we move forward with this lecture. We'll see this pop up again and again. So that's our ovary. That's our first major organ that we're covering. And the other major organ that we want to cover in this video, and we'll continue and finish the major organs of female reproduction in the next video, the next organ are the oviducts, or otherwise more commonly known as the fallopian tubes. They are highlighted in figure 46.10, just like the ovary. But here we're going to now sort of be moving away from the ovary, essentially. Here, the oviducts, we can state first and foremost, is that uh, they extend from the uterus. And we haven't covered the uterus just yet, but just note that their origination is from the uterus towards each ovary. So there are these long structures that extend from the uterus. That's where they sort of start towards the ovary. Now, what is this extension for? This extension is going to lead to the ends of the oviducts, the ends of the fallopian tubes. They're going to have this funnel shape to them. So there's going to be these funnel-shaped ends of the oviducts, and those are going to be a portion that covers the ovary. The funnel-shaped portion of the oviducts covers the ovary, sort of protects it, I'd like to think of it as, and it's going to be important because this is going to be the portion that's essentially going to receive that oocyte, that gamete that needs to get into the oviducts. And speaking of such, the reason why we have this funnel-shaped covering here, this connection essentially to the ovary, the oviducts is a highway that connects the uterus where we need to implant the developing embryo. We connects that uterus to the ovary, and the ovary is what produces the egg. And so, of course, what's going to happen here essentially is the following. We're going to have something known as a secondary oocyte. So this is just a more, this is the fully, let's say, or not fully, but mostly developed form of the egg that's going to have to go um, from the ovary. So the secondary oocyte goes from the ovary. That's where it's developing. That's where it develops and leaves the ovary by a process called ovulation, which we'll get to later on. But for right now, we'll broadly just state that the secondary oocyte goes from the ovary um, and it will go into the oviduct. 
And the overduct, I like to think of it as a, a pathway, a passageway, a highway, uh, a way to go directly to the uterus. That's where you have to get to if you are a female egg, if you are an ova or an ovum, I should say. The secondary oocyte tries to do this. And how does it do this? How does it move? Um, it doesn't have a flagella like the sperm, but it actually has this capability of moving because it's guided. It actually moves down the oviduct. It moves down the fallopian tubes towards the uterus um, and into the uterus via a very specific mechanistic process that is known as beating cilia. So there are these structures, cilia, Cilia are just finger-like projections that are going to beat. They're going to sort of flow um, from left to right, and then left to right, left to right, sort of pushing this secondary oocyte down the oviducts. And as it's pushing the uh, secondary oocyte down the oviducts, the cilia are also going to be sort of helped out with um, contractions. These are going to be specific contractions from the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes will have smooth muscle within them that will also push this secondary oocyte down the fallopian tubes. And then finally, what we expect overall from this structure, from this main organ, is to be the site of fertilization. That's a very important sort of step that we need to remember in this overall study of reproduction. The site of fertilization is going to be key. This is where the sperm meets secondary oocyte, where the sperm meets egg. And then we can also state that, let's say, let's say there's no fertilization. What would happen then? We've done all of this. We've moved from the ovary into the fallopian tubes, into the oviducts. What would happen if there is no fertilization? Because fertilization doesn't constantly happen. If there's no fertilization, that secondary oocyte that's floating within the, second, within the fallopian tubes, within the oviducts, that secondary oocyte actually just degenerates. It's going to break down on its own, um, and specifically that's going to be within the oviduct, and it will be cleaned up by, you know, maintenance, maintaining cells within this structure that will just get rid of it. And that covers our first look at the main organs of the uh, female reproductive system. We'll conclude our look at the organs in the next video. Just make sure to always go back to the functions and see how each of these um, sort of relates back to these functions in some way.